Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Shout out to everybody in the chat. All right, let's get started because we have a lot to cover. And this is not going to be a very long live. Uh, part of it is because my little one is sick. So I got to go tend to my little one. And, you know, children come first and then all this other stuff comes second. Absolutely. Um, one of the things I wanted to say right away is because I was reading some of the comments uh, in the other videos, guys, be nice to each other in the comments, okay? Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'm only giving commentary. I'm not solving a mystery. In my opinion, I think that the district attorney got it right the first time, and I support uh, what that decision, what that conviction was, okay? Uh, the second part is... Um, you know, people have different theories and whatnot of what could have happened. Uh, was this a sacrifice? Yolanda, oh my God, all these Selena fans and yada, yada, yada. Um, again, be kind in the comments. The other thing I wanted to point out too is that I had a lot of people in my comments that said, okay, you know, I'm not discrediting these people, but there are some people that said in the comments, I used to work with Selena or I had a relative that worked with Selena or I worked at the boutique or I'm a this and I'm a that. And mind you, um, you know, if that's what you did, that's awesome. I'm glad that you had that experience. Um, I would love to hear more about your experience. So if you have uh, an experience that you want to share um, as it pertains to this whole case, please message me. This is my email and reach out to me. Um, if you feel like it's something that you want to talk about publicly, the only thing I will say is that I ask for receipts. Because my giving you a platform lends itself to any kind of lawsuit. And so I have to make sure that I double check things, that things actually checked out. I mean, I'm just letting you guys know because I got a lot of comments about people saying that they were they worked at the boutique or they knew Yolanda or they knew Selena or they, you know, or they're and that's fine. Uh, if there's a story that you want to share, this is my email. I even had somebody from uh, shout out. He's probably going to watch. Ooh, I'm spitting everywhere. Give me one sec, y'all. One sec. Let me clean my face. Yes, receipts. Sorry, y'all. Um, I had somebody who reached out to me um, in the comments who, and I was like, well, this is fantastic. It was uh, a former Barrio Boys um, member. Uh, I listened to the Barrio Boys growing up too. I mean, th this is like my era, right? So um, if he wants to reach out, this is my email. Would we'll love to chat with you, especially with the anniversary coming up with Selena and whatnot. So it's important. Um, but again, I'm going to ask for receipts. Anybody, because I'm just telling you, everybody and their and their relatives are coming in the in the chat and they're saying that they knew or they they were an employee of that boutique. Awesome. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to ask some questions about that. So just take that for face value, uh, for those that are saying, you know, that they had, they knew something was going on and they weren't Selena. Okay. Uh, people say a lot of stuff online. I typically ask for receipts <laughs> and that's what my channel is. It's, re it's receipt based. All right, everybody. Welcome Carolina. Thank you for becoming a member. Shout out to all my members. Y'all we going to hit the ground running. I'm shouting you out here universally. Cause I don't have time to shout everybody else out now. Let me piggyback. Let me go back a little bit. Um, the problem, I watched part two and I have part two and we're going to react to it. I'm going to probably do another uh, follow up to this because my time is very limited today. But the reason why I think it's very important to talk about this last part is because, like I said, Yolanda doesn't have any credibility. The family that present these receipts that were presented also lend itself to be questionable, in my opinion. Okay, I didn't check them, the network did, or producers, or whatever. And I want to take a let's go back a little bit, okay? Because Yolanda Saldivar has said so many things, and even in this video, even if, even in, in this part, I was like, a lot of this has already been shared. We knew about um, a letter that she had received from prison from a man who allegedly worked with this doctor that allegedly had an affair with Selena. And I say allegedly because it literally took this doctor, I don't know how many years to come out and say something about it. Um, he had been deposed during the trial, didn't say nothing about it there. It took him years. And when he opened up about it, um, 
he also was very, I would say, coy about things. So Yolanda had alleged at some point that she had been assaulted. She had been sexually assaulted, rape, right? Although she refused to get physically examined. In this series, they don't mention the rape. They mention an assault, but they don't mention a rape. They don't mention any sexual assault. They don't mention the ring, the egg ring. Y'all know that ring? And let me show you what I'm talking about. This one, because it was in evidence as well during the trial. And I think that this ring is very important. When Yolanda had been interviewed before, she talked about this ring being like somebody bought it for her. She bought it for her using fan club money or something like that. They all got together and bought it. But then it was the story changed to the doctor bought it or somebody that somebody close by bought this freaking ring. This ring was the ring that Selena was uh, holding on to in the ambulance and basically dropped. Uh, it was collected at at some point, this ring was given back to the family. And it's my understanding that the ring was disposed of in the Gulf of Mexico. Keep that in mind. So this ring was not mentioned, which I think is very important, but it wasn't said. Just, just a thought, okay? And amongst other things, amongst other things, Wim, thank you for gifting five memberships. But let's get going. If you guys got a membership from Wim, please put a heart in the chat. Thank you, Wim. In the days leading up to the shooting on the 31st, you really, really have to examine like what was going on between Selena and Yolanda and everything that was going on around them. You have to be aware of what was going on in Yolanda's mind at the time. Her world was ending. Mm. Everything was closing in on her. And then all of a sudden, Selena's dead. I know you're scared. Mm, 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 mm. She's saying these things about Selena's father, which makes you raise an eyebrow to that because, okay, how, how does Selena's father play a role in all of this? It was very clear that Abraham was a dark figure as far as Yolanda was concerned. I didn't do it. He made me do it. But why would Abraham go after Yolanda? And this is a, such an important part, okay? In this series, they really, um, in my opinion, they did villainize Abraham Quintanilla, Abraham. Okay, they did. Selena's father. Shout out to Poe. Shout out to everybody coming in. Thank you guys for being here. They villainize him. Almost kind of, like, you get the sense that this is, he's a level of a mobster. I don't know. Abraham Quintanilla, historically, has always been very... Um, aggressive with his words very rude uh to reporters to anybody i i'm just letting you know that he's always had that he's very litigious as i think a father that's trying to protect his daughter legacy would be okay he's kind of since in the last couple of years i think kind of backed off a little bit maybe it might be due to age maybe it might be due to like the fact that you know he's content with the fact that his daughter legacy has, you know, his daughter's name is everywhere. It's international. People know about Selena, right? So I think things have changed. But Yolanda essentially is said to have been scared of Abraham. Now, keep in mind, Yolanda at some point accused Abraham of rape. Nothing substantiated, nothing found. It's a lot of allegations that Yolanda made out there. Why wasn't that addressed? I don't know. What do you guys think? Why wasn't that addressed in the series? What Selena was doing in the last year of her life. To me, that's the story of where she was gonna go. She has more agency, she's a married woman, she's starting a new business. Everything is lining up to be the future of Selena as she is telling it, as she is dictating it. It's like a dream come true. I mean, there's been a lot of hard work that we put into it, but when you get hard work, you get success. And, and we put a lot of years into it, 12 years now, and we're really happy, never thought we'd get this far, but- Selena had signed a deal. EMI Latin wanted to cross her over into the mainstream, singing in English. This was gonna go global. Abraham was her manager and her father. That was his deal. And it was about to break big. But Selena's dream was to do these things outside of her family. Beyond A, Yolanda's involvement with Selena in the boutique and the fashion lines did not sit well with Abe because so much was happening and he was trying to hold on to the music in. Mm. Selena and Yolanda, like they were expanding the, the boutique business. And, Selena and I could believe that. I could believe that maybe things got, you know, Selena doesn't have the time. Things got, got very complicated and whatnot. I could definitely believe that maybe some of this didn't really sit well with a with Abraham. Uh, maybe something to that effect. I just don't think that it warranted or even 
I, personally, I don't think that this man wanted his daughter dead. And Yolanda has continuously sustained that rumor. She had done previous interviews where she said that he refused for her to get a blood transfusion when she was DOA at the time of arrival. They opened up her chest cavity to try to massage her heart to get her heart pumping, but she was already brain dead. She bled to death based on the one shot. So mm, I don't know. I just don't think that a lot of this is making sense, but that's just my thought. Trying to find a place where the clothes could be manufactured in, in, in Mexico, right? And then finding a storefront in Mexico. Yolanda and Selena had traveled to Monterey in the past uh, frequently, trying to work on getting the fashion line started. Looks like twenty tickets. Mm. Let me see. Although Abraham, you know, tried to, to fire Yolanda at that March 9th meeting, Selena and Yolanda continued their business relationship, their friendship. They continued still seeing each other, and we know this because we've got the plane tickets. Oh, so look at look at here. So International Airport of Houston, IAH, two months today. Okay. And this was on okay. March 17th. Okay. There's two tickets. One's Yolanda's, the other one's Selena's. Okay. So they both flew on the same flight on March 17th from Houston to Monterey. Okay. So how interesting is that? Yeah. If she was embezzling money and they had that conversation during that meeting, why would she fly with her to another country? Yeah. Why continue? Why continue? Correct. Like, yeah. why? why continue that relationship? Yes. That is a valid question, I would say. Keep in mind, too, this was their, they're flying out after March 9th, after that embezzlement meeting. I had quit with her. I had sent her my letter of resignation. And she wouldn't accept it. She was, you will not quit. Who's going to handle my, my businesses in Monterey? Because in Monterey, the business was already blooming. And um, she said, you will not leave me with all of this. I can't handle all this. Remember, you pledged your loyalty to me. And she convinced me to go. Monterey is like this, this wild card. But there was more to this story. There was this figure of Dr. Martinez, Dr. Ricardo Martinez, who was a plastic surgeon in Monterey. He was kind of an elder, almost a father figure, but a refined, elegant, very uh, Mexican gentleman. And Selena really liked him, looked up to him, and he was. And thank you, Angie. Uh, Angie, thank you so much for the 199 love. Shout out to you. Thank you for supporting my channel, guys. You could support the channel by hitting the like button as well. Angie, thank you so much. Uh, I've got words. This is a very interesting question that I think you asked. We don't know. I but did Selena go? Were they used or the unused tickets? That's the question. Y'all could show tickets and you could show all kinds of stuff, but was any of the stuff actually used? Like did they actually travel together? And even if they did, what is that supposed to tell you? That she was willing to get on the plane with somebody who she believed was robbing her? Yeah. That she was possibly a very trusting person? Yeah. That she didn't know the kind of danger that she was in? Yes. That's what it tells me, right? Have y'all ever worked with somebody that you're like, and I've had this experience where you're like, man, they really don't know what they're doing or they're intentionally causing stuff, but yet because you're trying to reach a goal, you might have to continue to sustain that relationship, especially in a work environment. Yeah, I know what that is. And I definitely understand maybe that was Selena. Maybe she didn't know what exactly was going on, what she was up against. I don't know. He was kind of a mentor. Dr. Martinez was introduced to me and the whole group of employees as our Mexico investor, somebody that was helping us expand the business. And then all of a sudden, Yolanda and Selena were going to go stay over at Dr. Martinez's apartment. Things. And so I thought that was a little strange. During the trial, I started hearing about Selena's got a secret. Yolanda Saldivar, she had one more card to play. Well, you know, you've heard all my story, but you haven't heard about a secret. I had an inkling that something more than just him being an investor uh, was going on. Mm. Interesting. Dr. was a plastic surgeon in Monterey, Mexico, and somehow she told me that her father introduced the doctor to Selena. She told me it was love at first sight, and then I saw them, and they were holding hands, and they were kissing, and, and so that made me so uncomfortable because there's Chris at home, and I'm here with you, and what is your family going to say about me? I mean, I'm already deep into it. The fact that Selena may have had an affair with a, a doctor in Monterey, Yolanda Saldivar was saying that she had found out about this, and I don't think I've ever listened to what she said um, and believed what she was talking about. I, I think most people would, would agree that the, the story she was telling were, were not true. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, no, Selena didn't have an affair. Even the doctor said, no, I did not have an affair. Doing the trial. Dr. Martinez said that Yolanda was crazy and that 
Selena it's true. They were only friends. We deposed the doctor to ask him questions because the defense wanted to use his testimony at trial. I think I asked him about his relationship with Selena, and he said his relationship was a business relationship. He was helping her set up the business to make the clothes in, in Monterey, and that was the extent of his involvement with Selena. The relationship was just blooming. She was so madly in love with him, and I saw that. I was in the middle of a marriage, trying to help her cover it up. Wow. There's a doctor. Do you want to put that up? Yeah. This is interesting. That? I have no idea. It just says, doctor's, doctor's secrets. Elliot wrote this and put it in here. I'm assuming it refers to Dr. Martin. Now, let me stop right here and let me slow this down because it is on fast speed. She says, uh, Tina says, Elida wrote this and it says Dr. Secret. Doctor's Secrets. Look. Elida wrote this. And Elida wrote this. Elida was, is, I'm assuming was because I think she has since passed away. I could be wrong, but let me know in the chat if you all know this detail. Elida was uh, Yolanda's sister. She had appeared in various other interviews in 2018 and 2011, uh, trying to talk about this whole secret. Okay, L just just keep watch how they do this shit right here. And put it in here. I'm assuming it refers to Dr. Martinez. Yeah. And so in there lies this little little. It's like I don't even know what this is. It's like a cover of. It's like I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's just. But it says tu iluminas. So you light up, yeah. and then. My life, mi vida. In it, it says, Selena, te quiero. Tu amigo, por siempre, Ricardo. Selena, I love you. Your friend forever, Ricardo. You illuminate my life. The secret love letter. <laughs> it's just, yeah. I don't, yeah. Know. I don't know if this really. Yeah, she did. He, did you notice that? Didn't even spell her name right? Y'all know how to spell Selena, right? Selena doesn't spell. Y'all noticed that too. I thought that was interesting. Hold up. So somebody that she was having an affair with had been seeing him. Yeah. Tu amigo. There it is. Selena, te quiero. Tu amigo por siempre, Ricardo. Selena. It's an I right there. Y'all write it in the chat how you spell Selena. How Selena spells Selena. Mm. Por siempre, Ricardo. The secret love letter. <laughs> it's just, yeah. I don't, yeah. Know. I don't know if this really is from him, but I you know if I were a married woman and some friend of mine gave me, you light up my life. Yeah. It would be very questionable to my husband. I, I did a lot of lying. Mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of uh, maneuvering. Still are. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm helping her. No, you're not helping her. People already made up their minds, right? Yolanda's liar. She lies. And then come to find out by the doctor's own admission, it was happening. It did happen. That's what he said. And we've translated this interview, by the way. Check out the playlist. You could watch it there. We've already let the cat out of the bag on this one. No puedes decir con pan, con palabras, a veces, sino que al pesar de que fue muy corto, hubo una entrega completa. Dr. Martinez, he did an interview and he said that he was in love with Selena and Selena also was in love with her. I was willing to have a change of life for her. Yes, 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 definitely. And I don't regret it. Fifteen years ago, you said that Yolanda was crazy and now you're saying this, we were in love. So now we're thinking, oh, so Yolanda was telling some... In some part, the truth. In some part, the truth. Okay. But again, this is a murder that happened, right? Like, either it's the truth or it is, and there is no in-between when it comes to this. This thing that she's been saying since the beginning mm -hmm. is true. And if this is true, then what else could be true? Abraham. He All right. Let me stop right there. Let me take y'all back to what year was it? I believe this is in 2018, okay? It's available. Um, like I said, I'm going to do another video where I dispel a lot of what the family is saying to what they've already said in 2018. Now, mind you, Tina is not in this video. There's, you know, this is, this is Eleida. This is Yolanda's sister. 
okay, who allegedly, because I want to know, in 2018, Yolanda said that there was a diary. Yolanda said that there was a sex tape. Yolanda said that there's a video that the doctor was hiding. Where are all these things and why weren't they addressed on 2024 series? Where? Why? This is why I say that the family is not credible. Yolanda's not credible. The Saldivar family is not credible. Y'all are incredible. You're not. Because y'all been talking for quite some time. Translate. Hold on. Enamorados. ¿Cuál es el estado civil de él? Bueno, a mí lo que me dijeron, lo que me dijo Roberto es que estaba separado de su esposa, que estaba tramitando un divorcio. And she called the doctor Roberto. The doctor's name is Ricardo. And she says here, Ricardo told me that he was separated from his wife. So in this video, she's talking about this love affair that was happening. So que estaba viviendo en otra casa o algo así. He, she's saying here, well, they were living in a separate house. That's how, you know, separated they were. Pero realmente de... Whether he was married or not, I don't really know. Because that's what Roberto, even though she means Ricardo, told me. She says, you know, I haven't read any of the books or the tabloids because everybody says different things. Somebody said that Selena had C uh, AIDS, and that's not true. Okay. Hurry up. This is the sister. She's saying, uh, uh, Yolanda told me that Selena told her that she was about to take a shower and she moved the towel. And when she moved the towel, a camera fell out. It was, the reporter says, a secret camera. Yes, a secret camera. This is the lady who's the family's been holding all these documents. This is this was her legacy. They sat down in that table. Your the Saldivar family has said this is Elida's legacy. So where's this? Where's all this that y'all are saying that exists? Quedaba hacia donde? Al cuarto de la cámara. So the question that the reporter is asking: Where was the hidden camera directed? She's responding directly to the bedroom. Del doctor Martinez. I from Dr. Martinez, right where he would stay. And the intention was to uh, record Dr. Martinez and Selena having sex. And that is what the letter says. It says exactly that that's what they were doing. Who, who uh, gave these videos to Yolanda? How did Yolanda obtain these videos? By the way, these videos that were locked in a bank that an attorney went as far as to go out there to go to some bank to get these videos that's supposed to exonerate Yolanda. They were never found. Este, parece que dijo Yolanda que unas semanas antes de que pasara la trajera, uh, ella y Salina lo subieron. So, weeks before the tragedy, Selena grabbed these tapes. This is what she's explaining. Weeks before the tragedy, Yolanda and Selena were able to get the, the, the tapes. ¿A cuál es caja? Una caja que usted ha referido no se encuentra aquí, está en Ciudad de México o está en México y esa caja vendría a, vis, a vislumbrar oh, un ese, panorama ese, diferente. Ese, 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 pues, ¿Qué es esa caja de seguridad? ¿Es una caja de seguridad? So the reporter is asking, there is a box that you keep referring to that is uh, a box that contains important information that is in Mexico. Yolanda is about to explain about this box. Sí, eh, eh, es unas cosas que, yo, que, que ella a mí me... Ella usted le dio. 
these are some things that she gave me. This is what Yolanda says. Selena gave her some things, and this is a safe box. She's like, well, what's in this box? There's documents, videos, Cartas, letters, receipts. That demonstrate my innocence. Where's this box? Well, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> well, how come this box has never been unveiled? This is why I'm fighting at the court right now. Because my appeal is pending. Nine years? You tell that to the state of Texas. All I know is that they do exist, that they, that they are in a bank, uh, but I don't know the names. These are the receipts. This is a woman that was holding on to these receipts, the same receipts that this family, the Saliba family, sat down and reviewed. So where is this tape? Where is this diary? Maria Celeste Raras, and this is where I'm like, Maria Celeste Raras, in her book, chapter 11, talked about the fact that, you know, there was a, a diary. There was this diary. Diary never appeared. Videos never appeared. People have said a bunch of things but nothing has been substantiated. So who can we believe? Who's really credible? And get this, then the sister Elena says, um, I don't know the names, but I know that she sends payments here and there. She said Yolanda is sending payments from prison to sustain a, a safe box where the sex tapes are located? I forgot my... Uh, Tinfoil hat for this stream, y'all. I really did. No puede decirle en qué banco están. Es decir, esos videos están resguardados para evitar que alguien los tome o. Sí, okay. She says, well, let's just say that these videos are are safe somewhere so people don't take them, right? Aquí a su casa. Exactly, exactamente. Just in case uh, somebody decides to steal them. Ahora, aquí hablan de un aborto. And she's like, well, here they talk about an abortion. No se le puede decir no, porque pues no sé. She's like, I don't know. I can't tell you that because I really don't know. Thank you, Chaos. Thank you. Thank you for your membership for seven months. All right. Y'all ready to get back to the uh, series where it's never before seen, first time ever? Are y'all shaken by the revelations of the series? Didn't I tell y'all that this family has been talking for many, many years and they're trying to spell shit and then rewrite narratives that have already been put out there by them? Uh-uh. He started noticing that Selena was occupying a lot of her time to her businesses. He started getting angry about that because it was conflicting with her recording, mm -hmm. her career as a singer. That was his baby. She wanted to control her time, wanted to control her whereabouts, and she was not going to have none of that. So he kept asking me, what is she doing? Where is she at? And I, could, I couldn't tell him because I was more loyal to her than to him. And when I would not, anger started coming my way. Yes, anger. What this man has done to me is incredible, Larry. Uh-uh, it is. He's lost the tires in my car. He uh, put the uh, bullets in my car. He was. He was in my red She says a lot of things over the course of the tapes that sometimes don't make much sense, that are clearly being said when she's in a heightened emotional state, when she's literally hysterical. The lady was prescribed Xanax. They found that in her briefcase. Yeah, she was in a heightened motion state. Like that right there in my mind should have really bled. Like, all right, let me play devil's advocate for a minute. Douglas Tinker was her public, or was not her public defender. I'm sorry. Douglas Tinker was her defender, her defense attorney, right? Why didn't they plead temporary insanity? Why didn't they go for that defense? Because she had medication on her bag. I would have even thought that, okay, she's delusional, all right? She's in a definite psychosis mental state at that moment, right? Why not plead insanity at that time? I don't know why that wasn't offered. That was a question that a lot of people had too, because that's what it was. She was insane right 
And Virginia, thank you for gifting a membership. Thank you. Tinkle Tits, thank you so much for the 9.99. Ninguno abortos, no abortions. Thank you. There were no abortions. They did a whole, y'all can find Selena's autopsy. It, it's public record on Univision. You can find exactly. She was not, she, she didn't have an abortion. She wasn't pregnant at the time of her death. It's out there. Okay? All public. And so when the alleged threats from Abraham start coming in, it is hard to take it at face value. In the context of everything else, I would have a very hard time believing that her allegations were true. Yeah. Abraham's a little rough around the edges. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie to that. He was very fiercely protective of his family. But did you have anybody else that said that Abraham was mean to her and intimidated her? Or do you have that just from her mouth? True. Some uh, incidents happened to my car. My tires were slashed. My no police record. No records of that tire slashing or uh, brake lights being cut. Now, one thing I do believe, and that I would even give Yolanda, I do believe that Dr. Martinez had set up for her to be followed. I personally do believe that Dr. Martinez wanted more than maybe what Selena was giving, if there was anything going on, which I don't believe there was. But maybe he was just somebody that was there, a family advisor, and she felt, I don't know, something about Dr. Martinez doesn't give me a good feeling about him. It just doesn't. To me, it would not surprise me if he set up for her to have been followed. It's, it does. My brakes were cut. And then one day, my windshield was hit and it was shattered with what the repairman said looked look like, a, like a bullet. I think it was Abraham trying to get me out of the way. I didn't have evidence that he was slashing my tires. He's not one that does a bad deed. He always has somebody who does a bad deed. I, I fear everywhere I go. According to Yolanda, there were strange things that were going on and Abraham's really controlling. Mm. And I think Abraham's conflict with Yolanda is that she's a force that's pulling Selena away. And mind you, they still continue. Tina still continued to work for the boutique as a manager. Y'all are scared of Abraham Quintanilla, of Abraham Quintanilla. Y'all allowed, I, I'm just trying to figure this out, okay? You have this this idea or building a character of who Abraham was. And like I said, he probably was a very aggressive type of machista Mexicano, which is a lot of, unfortunately, I mean, I some of us that are Mexican, we we have that in our in the male family, right? But what would substantiate this? Why would why would Abraham want to hurt Yolanda? Why? It just doesn't make sense. The mode, what would be his motive? I was other than just trying to get rid of her because she's doing too much. You know what I'm saying? But what, what for what? The person that was between what he wanted to accomplish with her in the music industry and her and her businesses. Mm -hmm. If he got me out of the way, then she couldn't function her businesses. Hey, Miss Amber, welcome. Uh, Vic, and this is a great question. Clearly, you have to have taken your truck somewhere to get the bra fixed brakes. Who fixed those brakes? Who can verify that they did this work for her? Is there a receipt out there that she took to, I don't know, like her car to Goodyear or something for them to fix the uh, the uh, cutoff brake line? Because, you know, that's not something that you could just tape together, right? Like you can't just get a little bit of tape and then just fix your brake line. It doesn't work that way, y'all. Where are the receipts for this? He started an investigation and tried to remove me, accusing me of embezzlement. But I didn't work for Abraham. I worked for Selena. I was doing what she asked me to do with, with, with the checks. It goes back to Dr. Martinez. Why was Yolanda writing checks to herself? I believe that Selena's affair with the doctor was partially the reason mm. Selena was telling her, write the check to yourself, go cash it. And then Yolanda would purchase tickets or whatever they needed to fund their next trip over to Mexico to go see the doctor. Yolanda did not give up Selena at that meeting, did not betray that friendship. But is now so afraid of Abraham that she had to go buy a gun. So she was scared of Abraham because she had to go buy a gun. So she attempted to murder Abraham. So the bullet wasn't for Selena, it was for Abraham. 
to I guess I'm confused by this theory. Miss Amber, thank you so much for gifting five memberships. If you guys got a member from Miss Amber, put a heart in the chat. Shout out to BJ, you guys. Shout out to BJ and that surprise witness. I went mm. and, 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 and I bought the gun and I showed it to Selena. Yeah. And I said, I think I need this for my protection because I don't trust your father. And she said, Buffy, I want you to return this gun. So, okay, I bought this for my protection because I don't trust your father. Buffy, just return the gun. Like, okay, so you're talking to his daughter and you're telling Selena, Selena, I bought a gun because I'm scared of your dad. And Selena was like, it, it, nothing's going to happen to you. Like, th does the does the logic make sense to y'all here? Does it at all make sense? Selena would have been like, uh, in my thought, I don't know, like, okay, you're, you, why would you buy a gun? Like, my dad's not going to do anything to you. I I'm just, really? So why isn't Selena also afraid of her father, too? Matter of fact, why aren't, why isn't A.B., why isn't Suzette, why isn't everybody afraid of uh, Abraham at this point? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Selena said, take it back. Come on, Buffy. Come on, Buffy, take it back. What? And I'm going to protect you because he's not going to touch you. Ever. I said, okay. I, I returned it, but it continued. Exactly. When you're a prosecutor and a defense lawyer, you have the facts and you can make inferences from the fact. But I don't just come out with plain conjecture. You say something, well, if Selena was here, she would tell you this. This is Selena's secret. That's a classic work of a manipulator. You like Thank you, JD. It says $1.99. Have a great week, Rabbit. Tinkle Tits, thank you again for the $9.99 love. Shout out to you, Tinkle Tits. Listen, I'm just having a hard time with this whole ordeal. You know what I'm saying? I, on the sound of our, I can't tell you everything that was going on in her head. You inference things from somebody's actions. Absolutely. Did Yolanda sound of our plan to kill Selena on that day? Yes. I think, I think she also so. planned to kill Selena the day she went and bought the gun. And continue mm -hmm. working together. The fashion line was about to get launched in Monterey. And Selena's not going to let these little details like an embezzlement charge get in the way. She couldn't do it without Yolanda. Have you ever had to fire somebody, but you need them to finish a project first? Yep. And you keep them on, and then you know you're going to fight them least as soon as they turn in this last project? Selena was keeping her as long as she could to get the business records from Monterey, Mexico. So I'm sure Yolanda was trying to hold on to everything. I agree. I've had to work with, I used to supervise people. There are people that I've had to keep on and then fire later. Because they had to, fit, well, first of all, for laws, they had to finish up a project. Uh, it wasn't convenient at the time. Yeah, that happens. It does. She said, I need for you to put them on array. We, we need to finish this. We have the office already. We have the manufacturing. We have the seamstress. We have the models. We have Kennedy Fashion Show. And I told her, I felt that I wasn't safe anymore. But Selena was stubborn. This is what Abraham wants. For me to fail, he said, point your finger at me and say, see, I told you. You couldn't do it. And she was determined to prove him wrong. I had a choice, you know, quit or be loyal to her. So here we go again to Monterey. Yolanda was going to go to Mexico when she didn't want to go by herself. She had asked me to go with her. I did not know. And this is interesting. So then there's another family relative that goes because Yolanda is scared. And this is a great question uh, uh, by... Hold up. Crafty Kid says, why is it Selena's mom talking? Selena's mom historically has spoken out. She spoke out of Cristina Saraga. Cristina Saraga. Saralegi? Saralegi. That's how you say her last name. The Cristina show, Saralegi. Cristina Saraga. She's spoken there. She's spoken in Oprah. She's spoken in um, uh, very limited interviews, but she's not really one to kind of speak out. And also keep in mind that the, this was not authorized by the family. So they're not going to speak out. They they gave a statement and they said, this is bullshit, more lies and more lies. So there are interviews out there where uh, Selena's mom, Marcela, does speak out, but there are uh, few of them, if that makes sense. You know why she had asked me? When we took off, that's why she told me she was being followed. I was like, from who? She was really scared. And she was like, it's a blue car. It's a Chrysler Fifth Avenue. And I turned around and I saw the vehicle. Mm. That blue car had been following me for months, since the month of February. Everywhere I went, whether it was to the shops, to my home, that car was always everywhere. And no police reports. A relative that accompanies Yolanda 
notices the blue car. Th- I do believe that. I I would more believe that Yolanda was being followed by somebody that the doctor had set up. I don't know why. I do believe that at some point, because this is what I think is very interesting and very telling of the doctor's character. Dr. Martinez, Ricardo Martinez, goes to court, doesn't tell, if there was an affair, he didn't release the information there at court. Under oath, once a liar, always a liar. Under oath, once a liar, always a liar. He waits, and he told everybody that he was going to wait until after the trial, after the conviction, in order for him to speak out. So then he speaks out, and he talks about this alleged fair. I want to know how much he was paid in 1990, or in, what is it, 2011 or 13, for that interview. How much was he paid to speak out? Because there have been people that have been contacted Abraham Quintanilla threatening to release information. People that he worked close with, that worked uh, with Dr. Martinez. But they would only speak out if they were paid. So I want to know, because the doctor conveniently only spoke out maybe twice and hasn't said anything else. So I do believe that the doctor was trying to financially figure out how to make a a profit here. I personally feel that, because like I said, you were under oath, you were in court, you were deposed, you lied. You didn't release all the information. Now you waited until the alleged affair? This alleged affair, now you, many years later? I'm just not buying the doctor. I don't believe anything that he says. And at that point, I was becoming very concerned for my safety. And I believe that it was someone to my Abraham. The reason that I he never did. reported these things because Selena didn't want me to. She thought that this was going to be something negative to her career, and she begged me not to do it. And I regret that loyalty to her trying to help her make her businesses work because she wanted that to work i know abraham's character because i've lived it like i I experienced it and you still work there do i feel that abraham could have threatened her or sent people to follow her if he got super angry i could see that like in his character right yeah you know because she was around but it wasn't enough for her to just leave the job it wasn't enough for her to just say you know what selena etc i'm out of here here's my two-week notice does any of this make sense get out of here Abraham had anything to do with any of these accusations. What's clear is Yolanda was in a paranoid state of mind. That's what prompted her to get the gun the second mm. time. About a week before the shooting, Yolanda Saldivar returned to San Antonio and went back to a place to shoot, the same place. She came in and she said she wanted her gun back. She wanted to buy the same gun, exactly the same gun. And so they sold it to her. I think she took the gun back because she thought Selena was taking her back into employment. And then when Selena was saying, no, you know, this is going to be over, she went and gets the gun again. On the 26th, we met at Budget Hotel in Corpus Christi. She wanted me to go to Monterey again. And um, I was not very... Uh-oh. ...comfortable with that. And I said, Selena, being out there by myself, trying to continue your businesses, and your father continues to be in this in a menacing way towards me. Someone's following me, and I don't know who. My tire's being slashed. And, I- and you know, then again, she told Selena, because somebody's following her, and your dad threatened me, therefore I'm going to buy a gun. And she, Selena was like, yeah, don't worry about it. He didn't mean to threaten you. Jay McCarthy, this is such a good point. This is so contradictory, too. You say earlier, Yolanda, and Yolanda's family said earlier, that they knew Selena was on the road to success with their businesses, yet in part two, everyone is failing? So which one is it? How long? Did Tina Armillo or the other employees stay there? Because they allegedly in part one, they said they weren't making payroll. So somebody had to have been paid unless y'all just decided to work there for free. Which one is it? I, I'm, I went back and I was like, let me see if any employees complained about not getting paid. If y'all former employees are watching, I'm going to need some receipts because I'm not believing this. And I just don't feel comfortable. But she begged me. And just Buffy, look, he will not hurt you. He will not. I assure you that. And I said, okay, I'm letting you know that I bought the gun back. If she really was threatened, why go back to Mexico? And to me, it doesn't make any sense. In my brain, it doesn't make any sense. Why didn't she just walk out? Mm-hmm. Whatever Selena and Yolanda talked about, however Yolanda shared her fears about someone coming after her, Selena was able to talk Yolanda, go to Monterey for a third trip. You can't let me down now. You got to stick with us. We're almost done. <laughs> 
Interesting. On the 27th, defendant. And you say, Virginia Martinez, thank you for the $10 love. Lies, lies, and more lies. I'm really trying not to be mean, but Yolanda's whole being reminds me of a used tire. And is it refundable? Love your hard work. Thank you, Virginia. <laughs> Virginia is so funny. Shout out to y'all. I mean, this is a very heated topic uh, for those. Uh, th let me tell y'all something. Selena was my childhood. You know what I'm saying? Like, as somebody who grew up with their music, yeah, I'm very invested in what is the truth of the matter? It, it, what, what are people saying? What is contradictory? Like, we have to be. This, to me, is equivalent to, like, any other mega star that you're, like, wanting to find receipts for. Then it goes to Monterey, Mexico, with her sister, Virginia Mendoza. Selena was able to talk Yolanda, don't quit, don't leave me. Go to Monterey for a third trip, her third trip in the month, four days before the shooting. I was so nervous, but I'm a person that believes in trust and respect and loyalty. I believe in those things. Those are pillars of my growing up. Mm -hmm. and, and so you be faithful to your job or you're not. And, and that's how I felt. And I think I was showing her my loyalty. Yolanda had gone back to Mexico on a business trip. That's the problem that I have. So you're walking around with the resignation letter and you're still showing her your loyalty. When you resign, when you're putting in a letter, why would you need to show your loyalty at this point? She felt so uncomfortable that she took her older sister with her. And on the way back, they stopped at a water burger, I believe it was. And um, Yolanda went in to get some food. And Look at this. Eight o'clock in the morning. So I went in there and I ordered and uh, what well, it was been ordered. I went to the bathroom and I was washing my hands. So these men, I, I had no idea who they were. They started pushing me against the mirror. I said, what, what do you want? And just one of them just hit me right here and, and, and pushing me around and, and I, I almost fell. Mm. I didn't know what they were after. I did not know, you know, if they were going to kill me or, or they were going to take me. You know, all those things were coming through my mind. And I guess somebody heard that it was rambling inside of the restaurant. I was yelling that they ran out. And so, oh my God, I started feeling shaky and I, I didn't know what was happening. Now, this is an interesting part. I think it's very important because for the longest time, she was alleging that she was sexually assaulted. Matter of fact, that was the reason why wasn't Selena taking her to the hospital to get physically checked? Here, they don't even mention that there was a sexual assault. So which one is it, Saldivar family? Was Yolanda sexually assaulted or not? And so I left. I didn't even pick up the, the, the stuff. And I got in the car, and I just told my sister, let's go, we have to go, we have to go. And she said, what happened? And I said, I said, I just, I just, I just got assaulted. We, we just have to go, we just have to go. Yolanda says that uh, when she was in Mexico, she was oh. beaten up by two men. As far as specifics, according to Yolanda, it was two men after. Was it two men in the blue car? Was it two men sent by Abraham? We don't know. I mean, she was saying, two men beat me up. Well, she still had her fancy briefcase with her. They didn't steal her car. It was just not believable. For many years, there was no proof this assault happened. You had to take Yolanda at her word. And there was a letter that popped up. There was no police report. And there was a letter that popped up. Let's talk about this letter. Should I read this response? Oh, that is very interesting. That's a letter that she got in prison from yes. Lorenzo. I yes. think it's Lorenzo. This is Lorenzo. Lorenzo. The letter that Yolanda received was from Lorenzo Salinas, who was Dr. Martinez's um, personal chauffeur, indicating that Lorenzo. the attack did happen. And it was the doctor who ordered it. Oh, yeah. So he says right here, El me dijo que tu ibas a venir a Monterrey la semana del 31 de marzo. El dijo que ocupara a unos hombres para que te asaltaran. He told me that you were going to come March, the week of March 31st. He told me to uh, get some men to assault you. That's what the letter says. Para que tú no sospecharas nada. And so that's what she's been saying all along. Like, so that you wouldn't suspect anything. Somebody beat me up. To this day, people don't believe that she was attacked. Or people say that, that she made it up. Although this guy is saying, I'm the one who hired those guys. So it yeah. happened. It happened. So why not a police report after this letter? Why not a police report when it happened? Why not? And then your sister or your niece was there with you. She could have been a witness to the fact that you left that bathroom really hysterical and the way in which you look. Why wasn't there a police report? This letter kind of throws another wrench into what we believe actually happened. You know, it's not just Abraham's going to get her, but Dr. Martinez is going to get her, which raised the question, why would Dr. Martinez want to attack Yolanda? Exactly. Why would he want to go after why? her? Yolanda believes that the doctor viewed her as a threat to his relationship with Selena and that Yolanda might have the power for Selena to end that relationship. I mean, look, we've got this letter. 
And it's got a postmark from Monterey. The letter. But I don't know who this chauffeur is, who this letter writer is. We don't know if this letter is even legit. So what can you prove and what can you not prove? After all these years, there are still questions. Now, let's stop right there. All right. After all these years, there's all these questions. Is this the first time you guys heard of a letter? Let me know, because she talked about the letter in 1998. Let's talk about this letter, okay? Is it? Mm-hmm. Behind the Music was given two letters by the Saldivar family prior mm. to this interview. Two letters. They are allegedly from a man named Lorenzo Salinas, who Yolanda says she and Selena met while doing business in Mexico in early 95. The Texas Department of Corrections confirms the letters were mailed from outside the prison. But during an exhaustive seven-month investigation, Behind the Music was unable to find Lorenzo Salinas or confirm his existence. Let me stop right here. Maria Celeste Raras spoke with a man, not Lorenzo Salinas, spoke with the man Sebastian uh, de Silva. It's in her chapter 11 book where she talked a little bit about the fact that he was the man that was blackmailing the family, the, the Quintanilla family on Selena information. OK, that is going to be another video I'm going to do. And I'm going to put all these receipts together so y'all can see that none of what they've none of what the Saldivar family did with this new series. Unveiled anything different. We knew this information. He tells me exactly what I've been saying all along, which is what? that he feels his conscience is killing him because he knows the truth and he knows that he feels that or he thinks that I have things that will eventually say it all. Mm. And do you? Yes. Yolanda claims that two weeks prior to the murder, she discovered videotapes damaging to Selena's career. Look at that. And that she had a diary of Selena's that corroborated information on the tapes. Saldivar family, Tina Armillo, where is this diary? Where is this at? In his purported letter, Lorenzo Salinas claims he was hired to beat up Yolanda to retrieve the tapes and diary as part of a plot to extort Selena. Yolanda claims she was attacked, but managed to get away. You know where those tapes are now? Exactly. You know where that diary is now? I know where they're at. Yolanda contends they remain where she stashed them in a safe deposit box in Monterey, Mexico. Mm. Why is that information significant to the death of Selena Quintanilla? Because that is many of the things that were discussed that day. It was not about the embezzlement. It was not about no upset fan or being fired. Mm -hmm. it had nothing to do with that. What Yolanda won't explain is why, if she was protecting Selena, she instead killed her. Yolanda's uh, state of mind is an issue in this, in this case. Of course. San Antonio attorney Ramiro Estrada has been retained by the Saldivar family. He says while the information in Mexico may not exonerate Yolanda, it will somehow shed light on her state of mind in the days leading up to the murder. Estrada hopes the alleged evidence will open the door for a second trial and a reduced sentence. I think Yolanda knows that she needs this information to be found. Yolanda empowered Estrada to retrieve the supposed evidence and behind the music accompanied him to Monterey, Mexico. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a chance, maybe even a pretty good chance, that Yolanda is lying to us about this evidence? Well, I think anything's possible, but... Anything is possible, and she was. That tape, the diary, all these things that she says she had have never been found. Where are these things? Why weren't they discussed in this series? Because truly, that would be like, oh, Yolanda wasn't... Yolanda was a line about a diary or a videotape or anything. And I'm telling you, I'm willing to eat crow if if suddenly there's a tape, if suddenly there's a diary. Oh, OK. Well, what's in the diary? What's in the tape? I cannot. When I traveled by myself to Mexico without Selena, I started finding out things about him that made me wonder what is it he is all about. So I told Selena, I said, you be careful with this man. Because I don't know if he's loyal to you, and, and he didn't like for me to be doing that. But she was so madly in love with him. According to Yolanda, both Dr. Martinez and Abraham had to get her out of Selena's life. Mm. If, as the family tells the story, there were threats and bullet holes and all this stuff, you know, is that paranoia? People coming after me? Real? I don't know. It started with the accusation you've been stealing from the fan club. It ended with Selena dead at the check-in desk at the Days Inn. March the 30th, 1995, Thursday evening. 
Yolanda Saldivar. She checks into a hotel here in Corpus Christi and calls Selena. Yolanda had all these financial documents that Selena needed to prepare her income tax. She calls Selena and says, I've got your records. Selena, here they are. I'm, I'm at this hotel. I'm in this room. Come by. That's and, right. Uh, I'll give them to you. The prosecution wants you to believe that Yolanda lured Selena into this hotel room for all of these documents, right? That isn't exactly what happened in reality. Oh, so was it the first part when, you know, she was, because we just talked about this, she contradicted herself in the first part. She said she was sleeping. She, she said Selena just came in there. She was asleep. No, she called Selena to come there to take her to the hospital because she had been raped. Do you notice how they gloss over some of this stuff? After that attack at the water burgers, me and my sister, we drove and drove and drove until we got to the border. I called Selena and I told her it was everything that happened. I'm, I'm just, I'm scared, frightened. I'm, getting, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done working. I'm going to corpse. Meet me somewhere. Give you all the documents. And she said, no, 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 no. She said, look, just go to the Sedays Inn, stop there, and I'll meet you there tonight. I went to San Antonio to drop off my sister. Then I drove to the hotel. With the gun. I was shaking because I was looking around, making sure nobody was there. I drove to the room. I locked it. Selena goes to the this is interesting. hotel that evening. She goes with her husband, Chris Bettis. Chris stays by the car. He doesn't go into the room. She came in the room and she saw how I've been assaulted. I said, Selena, in the morning, I'm gonna go see a doctor. All your books are right there in the bed. And I left the truck open. And there's a briefcase in there with all the documents of anything you've ever given me. And that's when she started. What is this? And you just want to quit on me? I said, I cannot work with you like this. I got assaulted. What else do you want me to do? But we're going to talk about this in the morning because Chris is outside waiting for me. Chris says they're in there for a little while. And then Selena returns to the car with a box. On the way home, she looks through the documents and it's the same thing she's gotten before. It's nothing that she can use. So so she got a box of nothing. Interesting. Selena says, that's it. No, no more. I'm not going to deal with Yolanda anymore. She did, but she didn't even go to the truck to get the briefcase, the documents that were in there. So wait a minute. This woman is in fear of her life. She's scared. She locks herself in this hotel, but leaves the truck unlocked. Why wouldn't you lock the truck up? I mean, I'm just saying, like, because at some point you're going to walk into the truck. What if somebody sneaks in the truck and then decides to do something to you there? I don't know. The next morning, Selena went by herself in Chris's truck back over there to the hotel. Selena left without telling Chris. Chris was still asleep. She shows up in the morning. She says, let's go to the hospital. Let's go to the hospital. And I said, okay, let's go. Let's go. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Listen, listen. Look at this. I thought, hold up, hold up. Watch this. She didn't even go to the truck to get the briefcase and documents that were in there. Watch this. The next morning, Selena went by herself in Chris's truck back over there to the hotel. Selena left without telling Chris. Chris was still asleep. She shows up in the morning. She says, let's go to the hospital. Let's go to the hospital. She shows up in the morning. She says, let's go to the hospital. Let's go to the hospital. Hmm, that's interesting. And I said, okay, let's go. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's go. When Selena wow. took Yolanda Salvar to the hospital, she was examined by two nurses. And she's saying, oh, yes, these two big men beat me up. And the nurses, you know, look at her body. And we, we have the pictures from her arrest. And she's got these like brown spots and almost like bruises that were healing. They're like maybe a scratch or two. And the nurses told me that Selena was just sitting there looking with her arms crossed, shaking her head. Like this is not matching what she told me. It was so what Selena, <laughs> what she said to Selena was that she was bleeding. She, she was bleeding. Something had happened to her, right? They're checking her and this just doesn't match what she told me. It was just not believable. I mean, the light bulb went off and Selena said, I'm sure. They say that she lied about being the soul set, but I've seen the letter that states the attack did actually happen. They say that she was disgruntled because she was going to get fired when in reality, she put in a resignation letter to Selena saying that she embezzled money is also embellished, right? This whole narrative of this obsessed, crazy fan who was so distraught to leave Selena that she killed her. If you really look at all of that evidence, that it would open your eyes to the possibility that Yolanda isn't this horrible monster, but Yolanda had a gun and the gun went off. Yes, Selena died.
Now, how that gun went off. That's what she told Drew. That So Yolanda told, Yolanda had said it in an interview that she had been raped. She refused to get physically examined. So she had told Selena to lure her in there that she'd been raped. She needed somebody to take her to the hospital. Which one is it? So was she raped or was she not raped? She refused to get examined. They needed a narrative for the doctor was around so much so the affair covers this narrative. What if what if he was performing surgery on her and they needed it to be off the books? I don't know what you mean, though. Hugh C. speaks truth. Um, I don't know what you mean by that. I thought they took her to the hospital because she had to go to word out and not because she had been beat up. There's just so much. So, yeah, you wait until the morning to go to the hospital because you're bleeding. Selena sees you at night bleeding. So you wait until the morning. I know I got some logical people here, and this is a, a fantastic point right there. Fantastic. Any person that gets SA will go get tested. Well, sometimes. I'll put that out there, Drew, sometimes. But that's the piece that didn't quite make sense. Why would she refuse to get tested? We can speculate all we want because I wasn't there and you weren't there. Yolanda was there. Now, how she sees it or has interpreted it, that's Yolanda. And she'll she'll give you her story. But is that the story? Mm. Selena, when she came into the room, she kept trying to put guilt in me for not continuing with her and, and how everything was going to crumble. And she kept saying to me, if you don't stay with me, I know you, you, you're going to come out. You, you, you're going to be uh, telling everybody about what was going on with the doctor. I felt, I felt like, how dare you go? Excuse me, when I kept all your secrets. What do you want me to do? And, and all, I, all I could think is to show her. My loyalty to her is to blow my brains out. But I thought you told her, hasta la muerte, mija. Tus secretos se van conmigo hasta la muerte. Didn't she say that in the interviews? She basically, and this is Spanish, till death, till death, daughter of mine, your secrets are with me till death, hasta la muerte. That's what she said to her in 1995. My emotions were running so high and I was hurting. My body was hurting. I didn't know how to, how to operate a gun. I, I've never had one. And so. Never had one. I just clicked it. I said, what do you want me to do? What is the last thing y'all want me to do? What is the last thing your family wants me to do? You want me to kill myself? Because I'll just do it. I've got the gun in. And, and she said, no, 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 no. And she went to the door. And when she went to the door, I said, don't close the door. And pow, it went. She put it right here. Close the door, close the door. And then it went pow. Then it hit her. It hit her. Straight shot to the door. It hit her. Mm. Those last moments in the motel room, I don't know if Yolanda was just waving a gun around or intentionally aimed it. And was it a selfish act that if I can't have her, no one can have her? No one knows. Uh, Yolanda knows, and I'm not sure she even knows. But the gun went off, and Selena died. I just feel like there's a lot of risk in essentially retrying this case in the court of public opinion, when at the end of the day, she is the person who did it. Thank is you. There may be some nuance as to like the circumstances that led up to it. Yeah, but does that change the fact that she is the one who killed Selena? I mean Thank you. That is a good point. There's probably a lot of things in between that we will never know, a lot of nuances, but nothing that's going to set Yolanda free. The, what is so sad to me is that not only did you take a woman's life, but she continuously hurts the family, right? Time after time. And not only that, you're dragging your family Yolanda, the Sandivar family, who at this point has no credibility, in my opinion. None of them do. I've been telling you all, all along, this is a simple murder case. I expected a two-week trial, and I expected a two-hour two verdict. And I think, I think the jury took a little longer, two hours and 20 minutes or something like that. I've never looked at cases as win or lose. In fact, when I left the courtroom, they said, what do you think about this great victory? And I, and I told them, look, what you got is one, one family has lost their daughter. The other family just lost their daughter. There's no victory here for anybody. Nope. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. All you could hear was people cheering like it was a parade. Like it was the best news in the whole world. Yeah, that's the hardest part. It's knowing that the fact that from that day on that everything in your life is going to change. It's like being on an island. You know, it's just us. I think Yolanda has suffered. This family has suffered. She'll always pay for that. She'll, she'll have to live with that the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. And not enough is punishment. 
the fact that she's going to have or she could have the ability to. And that enough is punishment. Okay. Come home. That's exactly what Grandma and Grandpa wanted. Yolanda is eligible for parole in uh, March of 2025, which is quickly approaching. For us as a family, we're hopeful that she can get out, but also very scary and terrifying at the same time. I hope people will just let her live however many years she has left in peace. Leave her family alone. Because no matter what they do to Yolanda, if she comes out, no matter what anybody does to her, they can't bring Selena back. Nobody can. Interesting. I tell my family, even to this day, I said, I'm 100% responsible for that. I am. And this is the one piece that I wish they would have started this whole series with. I'm 100% responsible for this whole thing because she is. She is 100% responsible for this thing. She really is. The minute that she bought the gun, the minute that she repurchased the gun, all of it, she is. You can't take that away from her. She is responsible for the murder of Selena. And they should have started this docuseries with this. And they tell me, no, 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 Thea, it's, 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 we're family. You know, one suffers, we all suffer. I don't know the, the emotion of them having to, for years, not going out to eat, not going out to any functions, not couldn't, couldn't even go to school because of all the bad ne negativity thrown their way. It, it, it's a big weight for me. It wasn't until a couple of weeks later that I got to see Yolanda after it happened. And the very first time that I saw her and she was in custody, um, she knew that Selena was my friend, right? And she just told me, crying, like, it's... I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. Mm -hmm. In my head, in my heart, I know. My aunt did something and killed Selena. My aunt shot a gun and it killed Selena. I know that. Yep. But I'm on both sides. She was my aunt, but Selena was my friend. And I'm on both sides. You don't have to be on both sides. That's the thing. It's just this, you know, to a certain degree, I feel for the families, for all of them, because it didn't like this must have been really hard for all of them. But at the end of the day is what they're doing even now is just continue to lie and cover up and omit things that have already been said in various interviews. That's just my thought. Y'all going to come for me in the comments, which is what I was seeing. You need to understand. And there was more to this. Well, why has it been? Why has it taken 30 years? Where is this diary? Where is this video? Why? What happened to when she said, hasta la muerte, mija? What happened to that? It is hard for me to say that one person that I love, that's my aunt. Killed another person that I love that is my friend. I'm not here just to defend the person that Yolanda is. I have to talk about the friend that I lost mm. and a friend that I never got to say goodbye to. My decisions were my decisions, but the consequences are also mine. And I, I'm grateful for all of that. If I could turn time, if I could turn the clock, I'm sure she would have. Would not be as they were. And I want the people to know that I miss Alina just like they do so much. But I, I know I'll see her again in heaven. I know I will. She didn't deserve to die. She didn't deserve that. No, she didn't. All right, let me stop right here. It says, let me read this. Ricardo Martinez could not have been reached for comment. I don't know why. He's a prominent surgeon. Maybe he wasn't offered any payment. Maybe that's why he couldn't be reached for comment. Because, you know, you got to pay him. You got to pay him. This is why when he did this expose in, in, in Univision, I'm sure that they paid him. And all this BS came out of his mouth. He couldn't be reached for comment. Okay. Maybe the check wasn't big enough. Abraham Quintanilla declined producer's request for comment. He was previously denied many, he has previously denied many of Salivar's allegations and was recently reported as saying, I don't believe anything she says. She's a liar. Producers were unable to substantiate claims that Selena directed Yolanda Saldivar to write or sign checks to herself from Selena, etc. Thank you, producers, for putting that. Because those were allegations that were made by Yolanda Saldivar and by the family. There's a lot of things here that y'all could not substantiate either. Okay, this is just one thing y'all called out. 
Producers were unable to substantiate claims that Selena directed Yolanda. Okay, I read that part. Sorry, y'all. Producers were unable to substantiate claims. Uh, of the checks, Yolanda has never been charged with or convicted of embezzlement, we know that, or theft from the fan club or Selena businesses. Yolanda will be eligible for parole March 31st, 2025, after serving uh, some, I can't read it because the fair use is in there, but uh, serving a portion of her life sentence, 30 years of her life sentence. All right. That's how it ends. That's it. I want to direct you guys somewhere, and I'm going to tell you guys where you can find some of this information, okay? If you go to Univision.com, you can just Google search this, and you can find a lot of the pictures that were used, a lot of information that was used during the trial. In here is even Selena's autopsy photos, okay? So keep that in mind. Trigger warning for you guys. If you're looking for more substantiated information, um, you could even find the initial resignation letter right there. Um, you guys could check it out. It's there, the one that the alleged attorney wrote. What else did I want to show you guys? The letters from the fan club that were saying that uh, they hadn't received the the T-shirt and things that they were paying for with the $22. You can read Selena's autopsy reports. You can read Yolanda's confession, okay, and what she signed. You could even see this. This is the map that some of the officers drew uh, when the shooting happened. Like all the red dots are from the time that she left the room all the way, the red dots, how far Selena traveled to get to the lobby, okay, where she basically died. All the red parts are her footprints. And then they point out exactly where the blood splatter was found throughout there. You guys can find that on. Uh, this website, univision.com, right here. Uh, Papá de Serena Quintanilla reacciona a advertencia de Yolanda Saliva sobre los secretos de la cantante. It's an article, but if you go there, there's like 62 photos that include Selena's autopsy photos where you guys can see everything that was presented in court. Okay. I am going to follow up. I am going to follow up before I leave you guys. I'm going to follow up on uh, some of the more allegations where I can substantiate the receipts. So I have like a lot of the clips that I have are from 95, 98, 2011, and I'm going to tag them up to what they're saying now. So I'm going to cut up. And now that takes me time because it's an edited video and I have to upload it. But you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do y'all believe Yolanda? Has she exonerated herself? Is she innocent? Did they tell you something that you didn't even know? Because they really didn't tell me anything different. It doesn't change anything for me. Fan or not, it doesn't change anything for me. I believe that the prosecutor got it right in 1995, and they still do. And this family is not credible. Sorry, just they aren't. They're not. Okay. I will see you guys on the next one. I got to go. But make sure you're hitting that like button, please, and thank you. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Rabbit's out.